This howl is used by a hunting wolf returning home from a kill. Everybody comes in there, you defend her. Okay? Right. And right. how do I defend again? I'll show you. Cover. Yeah. To start off with facial expression, tongue. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously. <laughs> Yeah, got it? Yeah. Good. Get him. That's it. Well done. Good. Frighten me. <laughs> Please welcome the so-called Mr and Mrs Wolf, Sean Ellis and Helen Jeffs. <laughs> Sean, I sat down musing on this and thinking to myself, what questions do I want to ask? <laughs> and the very first question was but a single word. Why? <laughs> I think that the simple answer to that is that we didn't know enough about wolves. Um, our view is that these creatures are only going to give up their secrets to anything that's family, so we had to become a family member in order to get those secrets, and now we can use them to help their cousins in the wild. Weren't you frightened when you started? Terrified. Yeah. Absolutely terrified, yeah. It's um, the unknown. And to go into a wolf pack for anybody's imagination is terrifying, but to go in as a low-ranking pack member, not as a dominant force, is um, it's pretty scary. Oh, see, now, tell us about these two that you got with you. Who are they? These, um, I've got Tali and Helen's got Luna, and they are... Quite ferocious, as I see. They are, you can see, can't you? Yeah, these are, these are Salu's cross, so they are actually a dog, but uh, the wolf um, aspect of them is what we now use for education, and we're hoping that these little chaps are going to do very well with um, helping children, um, yeah. autistic children, therapy work, and search and rescue, guide dogs for the blind. We're hoping to get these guys trained up, but yeah. the... <laughs> the imagination, the, the intense um, instinct that these guys would have, yeah. we're hoping to harness and use. Where did your passion for wolves begin? I mean, you could have chosen any animal. Why the wolf? Yeah, it was... Is it um, because of that mystery? I think so, yeah. And that, that close connection to family, that family bond that we have now seemingly lost in our world is very much evident in theirs. And the way that they teach, the way that they um, look after every single member yeah. um, is, is, I find, absolutely fascinating. I was curious to discover that the packs are not necessarily particularly large. They're not in, you know, 30 or 40 at a time. It's, you were saying there's about sort of six or eight constitutes a pack. Yeah, normally the size of the pack is, is um, relative to type of prey in the area and also how many numbers they need to be able to defend mm. successfully against a rival pack. And yeah. that's what we hope to tap into now to help them, to contain them in the wild. Now, Helen, what persuaded you, what possessed you <laughs> to get involved with this man, with Sean and his wolves? <laughs> what was your initial reaction? Um, I think fear initially. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, but it was just in, to be able to help these creatures to yeah. dispel a lot of the myths and legends that go with the fearful part of the wolf and to actually help other captive wolves and their cousins in the wild and to valuably find out more information about them. How much time are you spending with them, Sean? I mean, do you spend all your days with them? We, it's day or night. We try, um, if we possibly can, at least sort of five, six hours a day with them. You have to have that time scale to maintain the bond. Obviously, on days like today, we can't do that. But yeah. um, we have staff members back that that howl that you heard um, earlier on, they can actually play mine and Helen's sound to the wolves and it makes them feel that we're in the area but just not visible. What's the ultimate aim? I mean, what are you trying to do with this pack? The, the pack itself, we want to try and eventually learn enough from them so we can actually use their own forms of communication to contain them without the use of fence or electric wires or even shooting in some aspects. That doesn't do anything for the wolves or the wolf population. So if we can use creatures like this to mimic the wolf pack on a farm or a ranch, it's enough of a natural deterrent to keep the wild wolves away. Yeah. Now, I heard a story, Helen, that um, he, was, he went out one night because they were howling and you, you had to go out in your night. I mean, what, tell me about <laughs> this story. I was tipped the wink about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, our female wolf was um, coming into season and obviously the males at that time of the year get particularly quite sort of... Um, What's Agitated, yeah, yes. bouncy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so, Sean, obviously, being the Omega within the pack, the diffuser, had to go down and provide that role within the pack. So he had to go in with the rest of the pack and calm everything down. Um, so that followed by a lot of a, a lot of growling, snarling, and lots of noise, of which you know, as a female and as a partner, got quite concerned and worried about. Yeah. So 
I uh, donned my uh, nighty <laughs> and uh, trudged down with my Wellington boots and uh, torch just to check that he was okay and the pack was fine. So. Not the kind he of did it for me. He I did it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he suddenly realised he wasn't interested in the world as much as he thought he was. Yeah. Well, we wish you well. Fascinating oh, programmes on nice. Channel 5. So, Fantastic. Uh, Mr and Mrs Wolf sounds terribly rude, doesn't it? What time is it, Mr Wolf? Great to meet these two as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Ellis, Sean Ellis Helen Jeffs and Luna and Tiley. Now, my next guest is a talented actress who starred in some of Britain's biggest TV shows.